right now on Fox 28 News. I'm Amanda Tetlack. A common council member says he was pulled over for no reason in South Bend. Tonight, a citizens group is coming to his defense. Also tonight... It's the ultimate stimulus package from cover to cover. Playboys covering the election in a way that only they can. And when it comes to us, that that's artwork. It's not a paint job. Meet the Michiana man whose canvas is as unique as he is. Watch as he puts art in motion. The news starts right now. In high definition, this is Fox 28 News at 10. First on Fox, a controversial comment during tonight's Senate debate, and it is already making national headlines. Good evening. I'm Tracy Capelman. And I'm Tom Powell. Thanks for staying up with us tonight. The debate between Republican Richard Murdoch and Democrat Joe Donnelly was fiery throughout, but a response made in the final minutes has put the race front and center on national websites tonight. Now, comments about it are also all over social media. Now, during a response to a question about whether abortion should be allowed in cases of rape and incest Murdoch said this life is a gift from God and I think even when life begins in that horrible situation of rape that it is uh, something that God intended to happen now Murdoch's Democratic opponent Joe Donnelly released this statement shortly after the debate calling the statement shocking and stunning donnelly says quote the god i believe in and the god i know most hoosiers believe in does not intend for rape to happen ever then murdoch's camp fired back quote god creates life and that was my point god does not want rape and by no means was i suggesting that he does rape is a horrible thing and for anyone to twist my words otherwise is absurd and sick. There's more on this controversy right now on our website. Also, for more info on all of the biggest races, including the Murdoch Donnelly matchup, go to fox28.com and click on candidates and issues. You'll see one minute unfiltered messages from the candidates in the biggest races. Well, our other big story tonight a South Bend Common Council member pulled over and his father arrested tonight. The community is speaking out. Yeah, this all happened last night after the council meeting. Henry Davis Jr. was driving on Western Avenue. His father, Henry Sr., was following behind him. That's when police say they tried to pull Davis Jr. over, but he didn't stop for 11 blocks. Fox 28's Amanda Tetlek went to a community meeting tonight where people talked about what happened. Amanda, what did they say? Yeah, Tom and Tracy, the community gathered at the WUBS radio station in the west side of South Bend. They talked about a number of things, but obviously couldn't ignore Davis's run-in with police last night. We have to let them know if they mess with one, they mess with all of us. Community members convinced Henry Davis Jr. was unjustly pulled over. And any time we allow our leaders to be attacked and we do nothing about it, then our entire existence is in jeopardy. South Bend police say they tried to pull over Davis on Western Avenue, but he wouldn't stop. He was ticketed for not having a light over his license plate and for not stopping. His father, Henry Davis Sr., was following his son and was arrested for reckless driving. Davis said this to the community. He said we've got legal counsel at this point in time, and we're going to let the, the law work. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's magic. So we're fine. Uh, but we all know what took place. We're clear on that. I'm sure we're clear on that. A statement from Mayor Pete Buttigieg's office says to their knowledge, the police department acted professionally and that the details of these cases will be reviewed and handled by the St. Joseph County Prosecutor's Office. But clearly the people in this room aren't buying that. They're positive Davis was targeted. We got to say enough is enough. Now, Henry Davis Sr. bonded out of jail. He was actually at the community meeting tonight. And we'll have the full statement from the mayor's office on our website. Just click on this story. Tom and Tracy. Thank you, Amanda. We have new information tonight about the train derailment in Niles over the weekend. The NTSB says a switch wasn't in the right position. Well, that took the train off the main line and sent it into a rail yard. The train derailed and thankfully stopped just feet from some rail cars stored in the yard. Fewer than a dozen people were taken to the hospital for minor injuries. 
Well, we did have a few periods of dryness during the day today, but for the most part overnight last night and this morning and this afternoon, we saw scattered rain showers around Michiana. But those rain showers are moving away. The skies are clearing out there. I'm looking for continued clearing overnight tonight, getting to partly cloudy skies by tomorrow morning and a nice comfortable overnight low of 58 degrees and a very nice Wednesday on the way. We'll talk more about that in just a couple minutes. I think it is speeding up the recovery. It's increasing his chances to make a 150% recovery. It has been two months since local BMX star Brett Benesiewicz crashed, causing serious brain injury. His mom, Lisa, says he is going through experimental treatment, treatment she believes is working. Recovery takes time for brain trauma patients, especially when the injury is as, as serious as Brett's was. Fox 28's Amanda Johnson sat down with Brett's mom to find out the progress he's made so far and the long road he still has ahead. Walking through the kitchen, the skate park that Brett Banasiewicz designed, Lisa Banasiewicz talks about her son's passion. I know Brett, and I know his determination and his love for the sport. I think he'll be back on that bike. It's been two months since his crash, and she says it's not a question of if he'll be back to normal. It's a question of when. We've seen huge improvements just with his alertness, with the energy level. And she says that's thanks to the hyperbaric treatment he's receiving in Atlanta, treatment that's rarely used for brain injuries. We've agreed to have Brett as a test study to show that brain injuries do require extra oxygen and the hyperbaric chamber does work for traumatic brain injuries. Five days a week for an hour a day, Brett is put in a chamber that Lisa says increases the oxygen level 270% opening blood vessels so more air can go to the brain. More oxygen to the brain lets it heal faster and lets it recuperate faster. Brett's been undergoing the treatment for two weeks, and Lisa says she saw improvement in her son's condition after just four days. That's why she believes this is the best option for her son. We wanted a little, we wanted a lot more for Brett. She isn't the only one seeing a change. Brett's girlfriend, Alyssa Daly, has been watching his progress. And during her last visit, she saw a big change. He made me pinky swore I was coming back. So you can tell he's like still in there and like he remembers everything and he's the same old Brett. Lisa says there's still a long road ahead, but they've come a long way. Amanda Johnson, Fox 28 News. And Amanda tells us that Brett has just over 30 more sessions of hyperbaric treatment. And then his mom says he will be coming home for Thanksgiving. It will be a short visit before he heads to an outpatient facility in Dallas after that. But Lisa hopes to have her son home for good by February or March. Well, St. Joe County Clerk Terry Rethlake is home from the hospital now. The clerk's office tells us Rethlake will continue treatments for a possible case of meningitis now that she's at home. Rethlake received a steroid shot in her back on September 20th, and she was hospitalized with meningitis symptoms last week. We're told she is taking it day by day and focusing on getting better. The number of meningitis cases across the country continues to rise. Nearly 300 people in more than a dozen states have gotten sick after receiving those steroid shots. 23 of them have died. Today, officials at Elkhart General held a media conference to brief reporters on their latest efforts to combat the disease. So far, they've admitted 26 people with symptoms linked to the outbreak. Ten of them are still in the hospital. They have an entire floor dedicated to treating patients with meningitis. The staff has regular meetings to discuss the best possible treatment. We discussed the needs of these patients, so we made sure we had everything we need to care for the patient ongoing since it is a new <clears throat> diagnosis and, and new presentation of illnesses to hospitals here, of course, at Elkhart and across the nation. Doctors say patients dealing with meningitis could be in for months of treatment and follow-up appointments. As for the New England Compounding Center, Massachusetts governor is wanting to revoke their operating license. He is also ordering surprise inspections of certain pharmacies. In other news tonight, a Milford man is behind bars accused of molesting a child. And investigators say the suspect has admitted to the crime. A Milford police arrested 31-year-old Kent Adam Flannery. He is charged with child molestation with a victim less than 14 years old. Officers who interviewed Flannery say he admitted to his involvement. He's being held on a $20,000 bond. An Elkhart man is also behind bars tonight, charged with stealing from the CVS pharmacy where he worked. 26-year-old Tristan Lachance is accused of stealing a large amount of hydrocodone pills from the CVS on West Hively Avenue. 
Uh, we have an update to the funding dispute at the LaPorte County Jail. LaPorte County Sheriff Molinauer says the council approved about $30,000 in funding. The money will be from the misdemeanor fund to get the jail through the first of the year. As a result, the jail is hoping they can reopen the wing that had to be closed a few weeks ago and that they can start training three new employees. Well, we are just getting started on this Tuesday night. Coming up, he's had no formal art training. And yet a Michiana artist is making it big using a unique canvas to set his art in motion. My special report is coming up. Also ahead tonight, ready, set, bag. Why these grocery store employees are competing for the Super Bowl of bagging. And then later in sports, the coach of the 7-0 Irish talks about this weekend's game against Oklahoma. In high definition, you're watching Fox 28 News at 10 with Tracy Capelman, Tom Powell, Chief Meteorologist John Fisher, and Sports Director Dean Hubbard. Fox 28 News, when you want it. Closed captioning on Fox 28 News is brought to you by Scooter Warehouse, your local home medical provider. Caring you can count on. On the votes that count, Joe Donnelly sides with Barack Obama, including Obamacare. Obamacare cut $11 billion from Medicare spending in Indiana alone. Two years later, health insurance premiums are up nearly $2,000 per family. And Obamacare is a huge tax increase on the middle class. Joe Donnelly's bad judgment is hurting Indiana families. Why would he vote differently if we gave him a promotion? Crossroads GPS is responsible for the content of this advertising. A few years ago, I found a, a book that I made in grade school, and it said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so I drew a picture of myself at an easel from the back view, painting a picture with a palette, and it said, when I, when I uh, grow up, I'd like to be an artist because I like to draw, D-R-O-L-L. -L. And that is how it all started for local artist Dean Laux. He grew up in Goshen and has been drawing and painting as long as he can remember. Many years ago, though, his passion became much more than a hobby that became big business. And now Laux is known all over the world for painting, well, everything. You've you just got to work hard every day and, and go after it. Words of wisdom from a guy who's built quite a name for himself living that way. World-renowned artist Dean Laux paints everything from pianos to boats, motorcycles, tour buses of the stars, and some of the most expensive planes and helicopters in the world. A few of his clients include... Randy Travis, Florida Marlins, um, Dolly Parton, Charlie Daniels Band. Been a lot of them over the years. But it's tough to get him to brag about it. Well, I like to stay humble. You know, it's just, it could, uh, it could all go away any day, you know. Laux says a piece of him goes into each and every project, and his personality doesn't let him sit still long. He's busy managing a shop that employs 17 in Elkhart, and recently opened Dean's Place, a fine art gallery showcasing his work in Granger. Now, I assume you had formal art training. No. No, this is just you just practice years and years and years of... I really try not to look at anyone else's art. <laughs> People go, oh, you know, this artist and that artist. Like, I uh, know. Wow. And it's not to be anything other than I'm, I, I'm afraid of, I don't want to be influenced. And he seems to have generated a style all his own. He calls it the art of removal. I put color on, I'll spray it on, I'll squirt it on, and then I'll put gallons of paint reducer on and blow it around and, and as it starts to dry, if I hit it with some other reducer that, that dries real fast, it'll start pulling us back into this, this, the spots that you see here. Now, whether Dean's project is huge like one of these boats or smaller like one of his paintings, make no mistake about it. It's just a different size canvas for what is truly a work of art. in size as it goes down. And the artwork and even paint colors appear different depending upon where you're standing. He owns the company Teod, the art of design, and they also custom paint all of the Liberty Coach Prevo motorhomes. When it comes through us, that's artwork. It's not a paint job. 
Uh, the crew spends about 1,500 hours on each bus. As you can imagine, this kind of thing isn't cheap. This artwork rings up at about $150,000. Alauk says his success hasn't been about luck, but a lot of hard work. I, I think every opportunity is a, is a spot where the door could open, and I've always tried to at least go in that opportunity and look around and see if it's something that uh, could continue and grow. Surprisingly, Lauk says he never looks back to appreciate what he's accomplished. He's too busy focusing on what's next. I'm never where I've wanted to be, so it's uh, it's it's the journey. A work in progress. It's yeah, I can just say it's just always going to be that way. I've learned to accept it. And Lauk says when he's not so busy, he might actually go to college and see what they have to say. And it's interesting. I asked him, I said, how, how many hours do you work? And he's like, oh, it's about eight to five. And then I said to assist, his assistant, so how many hours does he work? She's like, oh, all the time. <laughs> I was wondering, <laughs> when does this guy sleep? Uh, he's got all I those famous clients. Exactly. And all those big projects. It's amazing, though, oh, isn't so it? So cool. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have a gallery of more of his work attached to this story on our website, fox28.com. Really cool. Well, Halloween is one week away, which means trick-or-treating is just around the corner. Safety is a major concern with so many children out on the streets collecting candy. Experts say you should stick to neighborhoods that you're familiar with and always make sure your kids travel in a group. They also warn drivers to be cautious because all those kids running around. Children are unpredictable, so we don't know what they're going to do. So go the speed limit. And actually, I'd probably go a little lower than the speed limit so that way you could be prepared for that darting child. Police also recommend costumes have some sort of reflector on them so that they're easy to spot for drivers. For specific trick-or-treating times where you live, go to fox28.com. Well, it is not usually a good thing to go to jail, but a lot of you showed up today at the Elkhart County Correctional Facility for a good cause. The Salvation Army held a food drive in the parking lot. Organizers say events like these are essential. Uh, extremely. Uh, right now, we are spending approximately $2,500 a month just to keep food in stock for the people in need in this community. But the Salvation Army says the public stepped up today. They were really impressed with the turnout. Well, a fun competition for grocery store baggers is back. Martin Supermarkets held their annual bag off tonight at the store in Granger. Winners from all 21 Martin stores competed in a single elimination competition. A baggers have the chance to go to nationals to be crowned the fastest, most efficient bagger nationally, as well as winning a pretty big cash prize. A store manager shared the essentials with us. The key to winning is uh, getting the proper weight, uh, time distribution, uh, the construction of the bag. Um, so there's a lot that goes into it. More complicated than it looks. So earlier this year, bagger Rob Mao from the Granger store placed third at Nationals. The NGA National Bag Off is in Vegas in February. And you tried hard to compete with him, didn't you, Rob? I knew you were going to bring that up. <laughs> I didn't do so hot. I'll never live that down. I well, saw him in the But well, we had there. a lot of fun with we it. We did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He was really good. I was not. <laughs> well, we are in the home stretch of the election season. Well, candidates are saying to try to win over undecided voters in the battleground states. And later, how Playboy does politics when Fox 28 News at 10 continues. of winter weather forecast Tuesday at 10 on Fox 28. These are challenging times. Too many Hoosiers are out of work and many others are working harder than ever before and still not getting ahead. But I believe the road to growth runs through every Hoosier home and business. So our roadmap cuts personal income taxes by 10% across the board. So you'll have more money to spend on your family and Hoosier businesses will have more to create jobs. By letting you keep more of what you earn, that's how we'll make Indiana the state that works. Mike Pence for governor. 
I think at traditional dealerships, customers know that they have to go in with their guard up. The Jordan way is different. It doesn't matter if you choose a $3,000 car or a $30,000 car. I am not paid commission on profit, so there's no reason to steer you one way or the other. My motivation is to get you in a car that's going to work for you. I don't want to pressure anybody. I know that this is the right thing to do, and with customer service as your goal, how can you lose? Non-traditional commission is another reason why people choose the Jordan way. Get big savings at Menards. With an 11% rebate on everything in the store. You can't afford to miss this sale. Save 11% on lumber. Save 11% on hardware. Save 11% on paint. Get an 11% rebate on floors. And so much more. The more you buy. The more you save. Safely protect your RVs, boats, vehicles, and more with an easy-to-assemble VersaTube steel structure. Right now, all 11% off after rebate. Save big money at Menards. Create jobs. Joe Donnelly's real record? Donnelly's voted for higher taxes 28 times. A taxpayer-funded bailout of Wall Street. Trillions in new wasteful spending we can't afford. Donnelly's plan for the Senate? Keep Harry Reid and the Liberal Democrats in charge and cancel out Dan Coats's vote to repeal Obamacare. Joe Donnelly, just another liberal who will say anything to get elected. I'm Richard Murdoch, and I approve this message. This portion of Fox 28 News is brought to you by Subway. Eat fresh. You're watching Fox 28 News at 10. Now back to Tom and Tracy. A federal appeals court says the state of Indiana cannot cut funding for Planned Parenthood. The 7th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Chicago upheld a portion of a lower court order saying a state law barring abortion providers from collecting Medicaid funds for any medical services cannot be enforced. This is in response to a law Governor Mitch Daniels signed in 2011. Indiana was the first state to deny the organization Medicaid funds for general health services. With the presidential debates over and just two weeks until the nation votes, President Obama and Governor Romney begin their sprint to the finish. Now they're focusing on undecided voters in a handful of toss-up states. Fox News correspondent Nicole Collins is in Washington with the latest. Hello, Florida! President Obama hits the campaign trail, trying to put fresh emphasis on his plans for a second term by releasing what his campaign calls a blueprint for America's future. My plan actually will move America forward. The president outlined his jobs plan, ticking through a series of previously released, mostly economic proposals, and his campaign releasing an ad again trying to hone in on a concrete second term message. Mitt Romney's campaign releasing two ads today, one highlighting his plan to create 12 million jobs. I'm going to make sure that we get people off of food stamps, not by cutting the program, but by getting them good jobs. President Obama also stopped in Battleground, Ohio with Vice President Joe Biden and continued to portray Mitt Romney as a candidate who is changing his positions to get elected. That's called Romnesia. We joke about uh, Governor Romney being all over the map, but but it speaks to something important. It speaks of trust. The Republican ticket spent the day in western toss-up states. In Nevada, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan continued to criticize the president for not providing enough specifics about a second term. We haven't heard an agenda from the president, and that's why his campaign is taking on water and our campaign is full speed ahead. In an effort to appeal to young voters, President Obama sits down for a live interview with MTV this Friday. Governor Romney has been invited to do the same sometime before the November 6th election. In Washington, Nicole Collins, Fox News. And the two, President Obama and Mitt Romney, faced off on the political stage last night. And certain things they said sent debate watchers running for the Internet. CNN political reporter Peter Hamby crunched the numbers to find the top five Google searches. They are Obama's memorable horses and bayonets, followed by Syria, Mali, drones, and the oft-repeated Romney word, tumult. And now, here's your Fox 28 News 5-Degree Guarantee. Our 5-Degree Guarantee jackpot getting ready to go over $2,700. Maybe. Let's find out. My predicted high for today is 71. The actual high for today is 68. We will go over $2,700. $2,688 plus $28. Now $2,716. Our record high jackpot continues to grow. I know you want to get that money. Get on fox28.com. Get your name in there. Register. 
who knows? You could be $2,700 richer before you know it. Stay with us. Yet another guaranteed forecast coming your way when I come back in just a moment. Dwight loves to work. He is, however, an idiot. <laughs> Characters that are just your type on The Office. Tonight at 11 on Fox 28. The Fox 28 Morning Show is there to help you start your day. Start your day with the Fox 28 Morning Show. Watch the Fox 28 Morning Show from 6 to 9. On the votes that count, Joe Donnelly. Right now on Fox 28 News in HD, your guaranteed forecast with Chief Meteorologist John Fisher. Well, just about everybody here in Michigan got at least a, a little wet today, and some of us got a little a little wetter than others. You can take a look here at our, our map. This is put together by our first-born Doppler radar, our 24 rain amounts, 24-hour rain amounts, and you can see